how to create a blueprint asset with C++ in Unreal. Compared to all the other assets we created in the previous videos, creating a blueprint asset is pretty complex. It's a pretty manual process and we're going to look at it today, so let's get to it. So as usual, I'm in a pretty empty header file except the function we're gonna do today. So we have this new function right here, the create blueprint function. This function is just going to create a blueprint, obviously. The first parameter is going to be the path of the blueprint we want to create. So the blueprint path right here in the content browser where we want to create the blueprint and second variable is going to be the parent class of the blueprint so what's the parent class of that blueprint is it an actor is it an object is it a static mesh actor is it a pawn a game mode is it a user widget whatever your choice so that's why right here we have to specify which parent class we want to use to create the blueprint asset and finally as output the function is going to return us the blueprint that it was just created perfect so now we have everything we need we only needed one function it's going to be a pretty big one but at least it's only one so now it's time to jump in the cpp and here the first thing we're going to do is the include so we have three includes the first one is the asset the registry module as i said this is going to be a pretty manual process so we're going to have to tell the asset registry that the asset exists manually and that's what we're going to do it's a little bit annoying but it's not too complicated so let's do it we're going to tell it manually that the asset exists but before that we have to create the asset and to be able to create the asset properly we need the kismet compiler module and also the kismet editor utilities these two includes are going to give us all the functions we need to be able to create the asset properly and that's it now we just have to make sure that all those modules are already inside the build.cs file so the asset registry kismet compiler and unreal ed so i'm gonna go in my build.cs file and i think i already have the unreal ed right here and then i'm going to add the asset registry right here and also the kismet compiler right here perfect so now the includes are done the build.cs file is done now it's time to jump back in the cpp to work on the function and it's going to be a pretty big one so i'm going to scroll a little bit and actually since this process is a manual process uh, we have to make sure that everything is clean before asking unreal to create the asset otherwise unreal is going to crash and we don't want that so we're going to add a few validation before trying to create the blueprint so let's do that i'm going to start by checking that there's no asset at that location in the content browser so i'm going to take the blueprint path that we receive as input and i'm going to try to load the object that is located there if there's an object if it's not null it means that there's an object at that location and we don't want to try to create the blueprint on top of it unreal is just gonna crash if we try to do that so don't do that i'm just going to return right away because there's an asset there and we don't want to create anything on top of the existing asset so here i failed to create my blueprint there's already an asset at that location so please change the input path that's as simple as that perfect so the first check is done now the second check is to make sure that the class we are trying to use to create the blueprint is valid actually it's not only valid but also blueprintable that you can create a child blueprint of that class so here i'm just going to ask the kismet editor utilities if i'm able to create a child blueprint of that class so can create blueprint of class feeding it the parent class so let's say the user asked for a child of a game mode can you create a blueprint of a game mode yes you can can you create a blueprint of a pawn yes you can can you create a blueprint of a texture no you can't so in that case you're not going to be able to create the blueprint and if you try to create the blueprint unreal is gonna crash so don't do that so here i'm just going to return right away telling that i'm not able to create the blueprint because the parent class is not blueprintable you're not able to create a blueprint of that class you're not able to create a blueprint child of a texture that will not make sense so good now we're sure that everything's clean and we're ready to start creating the blueprint and let's do that the first step when we create an asset manually is to actually create the package that is going to contain the asset because all the assets in the content browser are, are part of a package so because we have to create the asset manually we have to also create the package manually ourselves so here i'm going just to create a package which is simply a location in the content browser so you just have to feed it the blueprint path here we go it's going to create a package for us it's going to create a u package and that package is going to contain the blueprint asset once we create the blueprint asset that's not the asset that's just a package containing the blueprint asset Asset. and if the package was not created successfully we want to stop right here we don't want to try to create a blueprint and put it in an invalid package we really want to make sure that the package is valid before trying to input anything in there so here if the package is null i'm just going to return right away i was not able to create the blueprint because i was not able to create the package because this is probably because you wrote an invalid path so let's say you added a few stars in there too many slashes and everything the package path doesn't make sense it's not going to be able to create a package and then we're not going to be able to create a blueprint inside that package that doesn't exist so 
Okay, make sure the path is valid. And if so, it's going to create the package properly. That's not going to be an issue. And then we can finally create the blueprint and save it inside that package. But to do that, it's actually a few more steps. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit more. Here we go. And we're going to start by asking the Kismet compiler which classes we should use to create the blueprint. I don't know why it's a thing, but it's a thing. So let's do that right here. I'm going to try to find which blueprint class and which blueprint generated class I want to use to create my blueprint. That's going to vary depending on if you want to create a pawn or your a user interface for example so this function right here the get blueprint types for class is going to return you the classes you need to be able to create the blueprint properly i don't know why you have to go through all that trouble but yeah it's a manual process so let's just do it so here i'm just loading the kismet the compiler module right here and then i'm going to call the get blueprint types for class feeding it the parent class and as output is going to return us which blueprint class we want to use to create that blueprint print and which blueprint generated class we want to use to create also that blueprint so good we have the two classes that we need these are the two last pieces of information that we were missing to be able to create the blueprint now we can simply create the blueprint just like that here we go in the kismet editor utilities we can simply call the function create blueprint feeding it the parent class which is the class we want to create we also have to feed it the package in which to save the asset because we cannot create just an asset in the air just like that we have to put it in inside a package and that's the package right here and then we also have to specify the name of the blueprint i don't know why we have to do that it should be able to retrieve the name from the package but it's not able to so we just have to feed it the blueprint name uh, just like that manually and it's not too complicated anyway so good now the package should be created with the right name and then we have three last variables so first we have the blueprint type this type is going to vary depending if you're creating a blueprint interface a normal blueprint like in our case right now or let's say a macro library or things like that so you can go see all the different types of blueprint you can create but in our case today we're just going to create normal blueprint so i'm just going to leave it to normal right now but you're probably going to want to change that variable depending on which type of blueprint you want to create and finally the two classes that we just retrieve one line before so the blueprint class and the blueprint generated class these classes are going to help this method editor utilities to create the blueprint properly perfect so now we have the blueprint created it's returning it inside that variable right here we have the nice blueprint that we can then return at the end of the function but there's just one thing though unreal is still not aware that the blueprint exists because we didn't tell the asset registry that we just created an asset so let's do that real quick right here i'm going to check in the asset registry module and tell it that we just created a new asset uh, feeding it the asset we just created obviously and that's it now unreal is aware that the asset exists perfect one last little thing right here i'm just going to make my package dirty to make sure that if i do a control s or a save all my asset is going to appear in the assets to save list the little star icon is going to be visible on the asset and the user is going to know that it has to save this asset before closing the editor otherwise the asset is not going to be saved at all so good that's it actually okay so we created a package the package is there we retrieved a few classes to be able to create the blueprint properly we created the blueprint inside that package that we have right here so place the blueprint inside that package tell the asset registry that the asset exists and finally make it dirty to make sure that the user knows that it has to save the asset perfect now the last thing i'm just gonna do right here is just say that it's a success i was able to create the blueprint properly and i'm going to return the blueprint at the end of the function and it's now time to go in unreal to test all that so in unreal as usual i created myself a new user interface to be able to test all that super quickly in here i have a few buttons and a few text component to be able to create a few different type of blueprints so i can create a blueprint actor at that location in the content browser i can create a static mesh actor at that location i can create a pawn at that location i can create a widget blueprint at that location and finally i can create a child blueprint at that location the child blueprint is going to be a blueprint child of another blueprint that we pre-created actually i have my blueprint uh, right here if i go in my 12 uh, folder right here i have my parent blueprint it's a simple uh, blueprint actor if you open it you can see that in the viewport i just added a cube so it's a blueprint actor that has a cube in there that's it that's as simple as that we're going to create a child blueprint of that blueprint because it's the same logic so here we go that's my user interface and now we're gonna go in the graph to show you how it looks here it is it's super simple i'm just calling the create blueprint feeding it the path of the asset we want to create 
So that's the platform I act on. That's the platform I static mesh act on. That's the platform I pawn, widget, and child blueprint. Uh, super simple. And finally, the last thing we have to set is the class, the class of the blueprint we want to create. So here, this one is going to be an actor. And like all the other classes in Unreal, you can simply click on the drop down menu and then you can select the class that you want. You can uh, fill any of the classes that are available in the engine, but make sure that it's a valid class. You cannot select a texture, even though it's probably part of that list. The texture is a texture. I have a few types of texture right here. So yeah, all these are probably not going to work. Hey, here we go. I have my texture right here. So I cannot create a child blueprint of a texture, obviously. So that's why I'm just using classes that make sense. So here I have the actor class, and then I have my static mesh actor class that I selected in the drop down. I have my pound class right here, the user widget class to create a user widget. And finally, for my child blueprint, I want it to be a child of 12 BP parent, which is the blueprint that I have in the content browser. So I'm just going to select it as simple as that. Here we go. So that's it for the user interface. Now I'm just going to go in Unreal to test it. I'm going to run my editor utility widget, scroll all the way down, and then I'm going to go in my 12 folder to make sure that it works. And then I can click on create actor. That should create an actor to that location. I have my actor blueprint right here. If I over it, we can see that the parent class is really an actor. Same thing for the static mesh actor. Now try it. Here we go. Create a static mesh actor. That's pretty good. A pawn. It seemed to work. I have a pawn. My parent class is a pawn my widget here we go i have a umg widget as parent class and finally for the child blueprint that one is going to be a child of this parent right here so i can just create child and here we go i have the same blueprint with a cube in there and if i open the blueprint we can see right here in the top right corner that the parent is the parent and i have the same cube that i have in the parent perfect and all those blueprints are the same as if you created the blueprint manually by right clicking or creating a child actor just like that so you can easily open them modify them them, save them and everything obviously and then one last thing if you create a blueprint on top of an existing asset you can see that the code catch it and doesn't let you create a blueprint on top of that asset perfect so i guess that's gonna be it for today's video and i'm gonna see you in the next one bye bye